So that beautiful email campaign you've just sent, it's sitting in the spam folder right now. Email marketing should be your most profitable marketing channel, but poor email deliverability is silently killing your conversion. Today, I'm sharing how to fix your email deliverability in Klaviyo quick and easy in just three simple steps. Because if you don't fix it, your emails are landing in the spam box and this is costing you thousands in lost revenue every single month. So let's fix it right now. First off, what do we mean by email deliverability? So with email deliverability, we're basically talking about how good your email reputation is with inbox providers like Gmail or Outlook. If your domain and IP address have a solid reputation, your emails will land in the primary inbox or the promotions tab. But if your reputation is poor, your emails will land in the dreaded spam folder. And your email reputation is based on your sending history. If a lot of your emails are marked as spam, have low open rates or low engagement rates, and because of that land in the spam box, your future emails will also land in the spam box. So you have to break that cycle. But why does this matter in the first place? Well, it's pretty simple. You don't want your emails to land in the spam box. You want your emails to land in the primary inbox or the promotion staff. Because emails that land in the spam box are rarely opened. So this will lead to low open rates, low click rates, and in the end, a low amount of revenue that those emails will generate for your brand. So a bad email reputation equals a bad email deliverability. And that means bad results across the board for your e-commerce brand. So keeping a good email reputation is essential if you want your emails to reach your audience and to let it generate revenue for your brand. But how do you know that you have an email deliverability problem? Well, this is pretty simple. Open rates will drop. Ideally, your open rates for your email campaign should be 50% or even higher. When your open rates are dropping to like 35 or 40%, then you know you're having an email deliverability issue. And we even had clients who, before we got started with them, had an average open rate of 20 to 25%. So these brands definitely had an email deliverability issue. So how to fix your email deliverability fast? Well, it just takes three simple steps. Step one is to fix your technical setup. First thing that you'll have to do is to check if you have a branded selling domain. So the way you can check it is to go to your Klaviyo account. In the left menu, you click on your brand name and you go to settings. Then you go to domains and then you see your branded email sending domain, which will improve your email deliverability with this domain. By default, email uses a Klaviyo domain. So you want to have a domain name that sends the yourbrandurl.com and the status should be active. If this is not the case, if you don't have a branded selling domain set up, you can click on set up your branded selling domain and it will give you all the instructions you need to set this up. You'll have to include some DNS records at your domain register and then you can go to the last steps in Klaviyo to make sure your branded selling domain is set up. It might sound a bit technical, but trust me, you can do this in five minutes or less. You can simply Google for Klaviyo branded selling domain and Klaviyo has a super in-depth guide on how to set up this branded selling domain domain with all the steps that you need to set, it, set this up in the correct way. The next step is to set up your default sender email address to be from your new branded sending domain. So let's say your branded sending domain is send.brandname.com. Your default sender email address should be info at brandname.com. Or for example, our website is magicianly.com. A branded sending domain is send.magicianly.com. So our sender email address is going to be emil at magicianly.com. Always make sure to double check this for your own brand in Klaviyo. So step three of this technical setup is to set up a DMARC record. So DMARC stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. It's a protocol that uses SPF and DKIM to determine the authenticity of every single email, giving domain owners the ability to protect their domain from unauthorized use. There's a whole technical story behind it, but you keep it simple. You just have to set up a DMARC record in your DNS setting. So again, if you Google DMARC records, you can simply find the instructions to set up a DMARC records but what you'll have to do you go to your dns records you set up a new txt record where the name is going to be underscore dmark and the value is going to be this value and then you have to check if you set up your dmark record in the correct way so again you simply google for dmark check you fill in your domain and then it will show you if the dmark record is set up in the proper way just the first hit on google is going to be fine like easydmark.com uh, which has a good dmark checker for you and the last step of this technical setup which is kind of a bonus is is to set up a BIMI record. And this technology allows brands to set up a logo with their email address so it pops out in the inbox of your email subscribers because they immediately see your logo and it builds some brand awareness because they immediately can see your logo. Also, 
for Gmail users, there will be a blue check mark, which again shows that you're a trustworthy brand. Setting up a BIMI record is not free. It will cost you around the $1,500 at the time of recording of this video. For more information, make sure to check out their website, which is bimigroup.org. So that was the boring part. Let's continue with step two of this fixture email deliverability process, which is to clean your email list. And I see this go wrong all the time that e-commerce brands are super proud of their massive email list that they have. But what they don't know is that only 10% of the list actually engaged with their brand. It's not about having a massive email list. It's more so about the quality of your email list. So to improve your email deliverability and to avoid the spam folder, you need to stop emailing emails to unengaged people. And this is what happens a lot of the times when you have unengaged people on your email list. So my advice always is to get rid of those unengaged people as soon as possible. So you need to basically suppress them from your email list. And this is not only good for your email deliverability, but it's also good to save some costs with your Klaviyo bill. Because in 2025, Klaviyo changed their billing model and you're now paying for the amount of active profiles on your email list. So let's say you have 100,000 email subscribers on your email list, only 10% is engaged. You're now paying for 90,000 email subscribers who are not engaged with your brand, but you still need to pay for them. So if you simply got rid of those people who are unengaged, you can now lower your Klaviyo plan, improve your email deliverability and pay less to Klaviyo. So it's like a win-win situation for every e-commerce brand. So what you're going to do, we're going to clean your email list and we're going to do this in five simple steps. We're going to make five segments. Once we create those five segments, you can suppress each segment and this will lower down your active profile. So step one is to get rid of unengaged people of the last 180 days. So if someone hasn't opened one of your emails in the last 180 days or has not been active on your website in the last 180 days, but they did receive at least 15 emails from your side and they can still receive or they still have consent for email marketing, you want to make a segment with all of these people and suppress them from your email list. Someone hasn't opened an email, hasn't been on your website in the last six months, you're not going to re-engage them. Of course, you could try to re-engage them with a re-engagement campaign, but if you already have low email deliverability and you're now going to email this audience specifically, um, you're probably going to enter like a lot more problems with your email deliverability because it sends a super bad signal to Gmail and out. The second segment that you want to make is uh, people who didn't receive an email in the last year. So the conditions are first active or created at least 365 days ago and they received zero emails in the last year. They haven't been active on your website in the last year, but they still can receive email marketing. Again, there's a lot of debate in here. People say try to run re-engagement campaigns with those people. But if someone hasn't been active on your website in the last year, they never received an email from your site in the last year. There's absolutely zero chance that you can re-engage them to buy from your store. They don't know your brand anymore. So if you start emailing them again, they will only perceive that email as spam, mark your email as spam, and your email deliverability will go down even further. So just make a segment of these people and suppress them. No, it can be hard, but trust me, it is the best for your e-commerce brand and your email marketing system. The third segment that you want to make is people who didn't open any of your emails. So the conditions are first active or created at least 365 days ago. They've never received an email ever, like not in the past year, but never, uh, but they can still receive email marketing. So this is basically like a catch up of uh, the second segment. There can still be some people in this segment and also these people you want to suppress them. Sometimes you see e-com brands with a big segment of these people because they had some issues in the way they've set up their sign up form and welcome series flow. So basically they captured an email address, but they never nurtured them and with a welcome flow and they never nurtured them with email campaigns. And now they're just in the email list, never receive an email. And again, same situation as previous segment, they don't know about your brand anymore. So it doesn't make sense to start emailing them again. So just get rid of those people. And then the next segment is a group of people who've marked your emails as spam. So the condition is simple, has marked as spam at least once over all time and person can receive email marketing. So if they marked you as spam, your emails will land in their spam box. That's a super bad signal to Gmail and Outlook. You simply want to get rid of people. The last segment that we're going to make are emails that have bounced. So if someone has bounced email at least four times over all time, where bounce type equals soft or has bounced email at least once over all time, where bounce type equals hard and the person can receive email marketing, you want to make this segment and get rid of those as well. So there is a difference between soft bounces and hard bounces. Soft bounces means that temporarily an inbox wasn't available. So you sent them an email, but temporarily the email could not land in the inbox due to issues from their side. A hard bounce means that it couldn't reach the inbox, but it's like for always because the inbox is not existing anymore, for example, or they've blocked you. So that's why when a hard bounce happens once, you want to get rid of them. Soft bounces, when we want to give them a couple opportunities 
opportunities or four opportunities to uh, try to land in their inbox again. If not, after four times, you also want to, get, want to get rid of those people as well because a high bounce rate is like a super bad signal to Gmail and Outlook. The main KPIs that those inbox providers look at are your unsubscribe rate, although it's less nowadays, your spam complaint rate, so if, the, if they've marked them as a spam, and your bounce rate, so if you have a lot of bounce emails. So those are the three metrics that they mainly look at. Of course, they also take a look at the engagement rates, operates, click rates, but these three metrics are super important. So you want to make sure that those metrics are as low as possible and you want to get rid of those people who uh, encourage those high metrics. So these are the five segments that you want to create and then you want to suppress them. Now you've cleaned your list, you basically got rid of the dead weight. And what's left are the somewhat engaged or engaged people on your email list. So this already sets the stage for a much better situation where you cannot email people who are super unengaged with your friend. And just doing this will already send a much better signal to Gmail and Outlook. Now we go to the third and final step of this email deliverability fixing program, and that's to improve your email reputation. Because as I said at the beginning of this video, improving your email deliverability has everything to do with improving your email reputation, the reputation that you have with the inbox provider. So we want to break the cycle of low engagement complaints and landing in the spam folder and to do that we'll trick the inbox providers by emailing only to the most engaged people because those are the people who are going to open your emails going to click in your emails and this will trick the inbox providers because they will see hey this brand is emailing to people who are all opening the emails so this must be a good brand so let's improve their reputation so that's kind of the trick that you want to do and this is a process that's going to take a couple of weeks but once done your email deliverability will be much much, much better. So we have a game plan for this, which I'm about to show you right now. First of all, we need to make segments of engaged people. So we want to create engaged segments of 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. Of course, you can expand this later on, but these are the most essential segments that you want to make first. And a segment looks like this. So has opened email at least once, or has clicked email at least once, or has active on site at least once, or has placed order at least once in the last 14, 30, 60, or 90 days. So you make segments based on each time frame, and person can receive email marketing. Simple as that. Some people only like to include first two, so opened email or clicked email. I like to include like active on site or placed order as well, uh, because I think website activity is maybe even more important than email activity. So if someone has been active on your website, when you start emailing them, there's still a high chance they will recognize your brand and that they will open your email. So once you created all these engaged segments, it's now time for our game plan. Week one and week two. Step one, we're going to turn off all flows except for your welcome series, post purchase, and abandonment series. So your site, browse card, and check abandonment. So in general, this means you have to turn off your customer win back flow. You have to turn off your replenishment reminder. And you'll have to turn off your sunset unengaged flow. Now we're going to send three email campaigns a week to only the 14 days engaged segment. And we're going to do this for two weeks. So you will send six emails to the 14 days engaged segment. Let this run for two weeks. Now you got six campaigns sent. Now let's continue with the second part of this game plan. After sending these six emails, you will check your open rates. Did it go up to 50% or even higher? If so, we can continue with the next step. If it's lower than 50%, continue with six more emails to the 14 days engaged segment for another two weeks. Let's say your open rates are 50% or higher. We're now going to send three campaigns a week to only the 30 days engaged segment. Do this for two weeks, so six emails in total. So we expand from 14 days to 30 days again. Week five and six. After those two weeks, we're going to check our open rates again. Did the open rate stay around the 50% area? Then we're going to continue with the next step. Did the open rate drop to underneath the 50%? Now you want to continue with six more emails to the 30 days engaged segment for another two weeks. But let's say the open rates are 50% or higher. Now we're going to send three campaigns a week again to only the 60 days engaged segments and do this again for two weeks weeks now after week six going to check the open rates again did the open rate stay around the 50 area continue with the next step did the open rates drop underneath the 50 percent again continue with six more emails to the 60 days engage segment for another two weeks if your open rates are 50 percent or higher you can now expand the segment to 90 days engage which in most cases is like the main segment that you want to send emails to and this is also the point that you can turn on all your flows again because at this stage your email availability and your email reputation is much better so you can turn on uh, the low operate flows like your sunset unengaged flow and also like customer win back and replenishment reminder. If your operate is going towards the 60% or even higher, we have clients where we have such operates, you can continue the process and expand to 120 days. 
150 days, 180 days. And as long as your open rates are 50% or higher, you can just expand this segment. We even have some clients who are selling through their entire email list because the open rates are just so high. Now, always keep this in mind. Inbox providers like Gmail and Outlook only care about one thing, and that's the user area. They want to give their users the best possible experience. So they don't care about your brand. So they just look at your email subscribers, how they are responding to your emails. So are they opening your emails? Are they clicking in your emails? Are they responding to your emails? Or are they ignoring your emails, sending your emails to spam or unsubscribing from your email? So guess what? The secret to a good email deliverability is to make sure that the majority of your audience will do the first three things, and not the last three things. So you want to make sure that the majority of your audience will give positive engagement with your emails. So how can you do this? Simple. You want to create engaging content that people actually like to open. You want to avoid overloading with sales because people get annoyed with that. And you just want to add value to storytelling, through tips and tricks, and to entertainment. And you want to focus on what your subscribers want to see from your brand. So you're not creating emails for yourself, you're creating emails for your email subscribers and what they want. And guess what? If Gmail noticed that your audience lost to open your email, lost to click in your emails, or lost to engage with your brand, your email reputation will go up. But let's say Gmail sees that people don't like to open your emails anymore, that you're not clicking in, that they're not clicking in your emails anymore, that they're sending it to spam. Guess what? The email reputation will go down. It's that simple. So just create fun emails that people like to open. Email deliverability in the end, it's that simple. And at this point, you might think, cool story, but don't you have a few hacks for me to improve my email deliverability even further? Sure, I've got you covered. Here are some simple tips that you can implement straight away. Tip one, use at least one or two plain text emails every single month. Because in general, these emails have high click rates and high open rate. And it's a nice pattern interrupt from all the designed emails that you're sending. Tip two, have big call to action buttons above the fold in every single email. This will improve your click rate and therefore improve your email deliverability. And most importantly, improve your email marketing results. Tip three, include product categories in your footer area. This will boost your click rate because if people have seen your email and they don't like the products that you mention in it, but they are interested in your product category, Categories, they will click in your email, go to your website. Again, this sends a super positive signal to your inbox provider. Tip four, when you share products in your emails, max it to around three to five products in every single email and make sure to include a shop now button for every product see this go wrong all the time that they just have a product image and they don't include a shop now button shop now button is essential for people to click again to boost the click rate and therefore sends a positive signal to gmail and outlook tip five always end this section with the product blocks with a shop all button because again if people are not interested in the products that you've mentioned by adding a shop all button people are more likely to click on that button to see one of your other products again this will boost your click rate boost your email reputation tip number Number six, make your emails short and easy to digest. 2025, people are used to TikTok videos and stuff like that. So you have to make sure your emails are short and snappy and easy to digest. Only check your email for like a minute or less. So don't write long essays, but include things like infographics, charts, and graphs. Tip number seven, don't use too many sales events and max it at one sales event every month or every other month. Because otherwise, people will get annoyed by all the discounts that you give them away and they're simply not going to buy anyone. And tip number eight, the most important one, focus on engaging fun or educational content in your emails. Make sure that people like to open your emails. So there you have it, the complete guide to fixing your email deliverability in Klaviyo. But here's the thing, fixing your deliverability is just the first step. What do you actually send when people start receiving your emails? If you're tired of constant discounting and want to know how to create engaging and fun emails that people like to open, I've got the perfect resource for you. Check out this video where I share the exact framework for creating creating a non-discounted email strategy that simply works. You will learn how to plan out an email campaign calendar without using discounts all the time, and that will create fun, engaging, and educational content for your brand that people love to open. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly content on how to boost your email marketing results. And if you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in the next video.